So today I'm here with this freight haul and caravan and Raysbeck Engineering and with me is Hal from Raysbeck. Hello there. Well hello I'm Tom Defoe with Jetta Viva and I recently had an opportunity to fly a Grand Caravan that's in the experimental category. Um, Raysbeck Engineering is working on some mods. I got to fly it, uh, do a review and I wrote an article and I thought I would just jump on here and actually read it and uh, simultaneously I'll mix in some photos and video and, and show you uh, so here's my thoughts. From Grand to Epic, evaluating the Grand Caravan Epic package by Raysbeck Engineering. Now who am I to turn down an opportunity to fly a Cessna Caravan? When Hal Chrisman, president at Raysbeck Engineering, offered the chance to fly their experimental Cessna 208B to evaluate and give feedback on their newly designed STC, I cleared my Friday morning to meet up with lead engineer Blaine Watcomb, test pilot Ken, and November 208 Papa Charlie. We met at Jet Aviation in Scottsdale. Late October mornings in Scottsdale, Arizona bring perfect flying conditions. With calm wind, blue skies, cool temps, the colorful desert mountains surrounding the Valley of the Sun beckoned us to go explore the skies. November 208 Papa Charlie is a freight dog. Exactly what you would expect. High time, paint is a little rough, a little dirty on the belly. It's a legacy 2002 vintage Grand Caravan without the frills and bells and whistles you would expect to find on a late model caravan. Garmin G1000 Avionics or TK NA Ice, none of that fancy stuff. The question for the day was this. Could an old freighter with the old 675 horsepower PT6A, the Dash 114A version, pick up some speed with Raysbeck's touch on the plane? The late James Raysbeck and his team of engineers are known worldwide for having developed modifications that enhanced both the performance as well as functionality of Beechcraft King Air airplanes. Now having turned their eyes to the Cessna Caravan, a plane that was never built for speed, rather for utility, they saw an opportunity to dial it up a notch, or at least to bring more fuel economy to the workhorse. They've focused on three areas, broken into two separate supplemental type certificates, or STCs. The first, which is now submitted to the FAA for review, they're calling it the EPIC package, consists of a speed fairing blending the nose landing gear fairing into the cargo pod, as well as aft body strakes. The second, still in final development, adds main landing gear wheel fairings, or wheel pants as we might call them in the industry. For the purpose of this flight, I was only able to fly with the forward fairing and the aft body strakes. The wheel pants aren't quite far enough along in development for us to fly them yet. To my surprise, the fit and finish of the forward fairing had a pleasant look, as though it belonged there and maybe should have been part of Cessna's original design. While this experimental example wasn't the prettiest, I could easily imagine the installation slightly more refined with matching paint, cleaner edges blending the lower lines of these oversized high-winged Cessnas into a visually attractive extension of the fuselage. The off-body strakes are understated, and they look like strakes. Simple devices that Raysbeck expects will provide enhanced lateral stability as well as some speed due to the aerodynamic effect of guiding air along the aft belly and reducing turbulent flow. Good morning, I'm Tom Defoe with Jetta Viva, and today we're going to go fly this Grand Caravan that's been Raysbeck modified with a speed fairing in the front and some aft body strakes. We're gonna go fly and see how it performs. Let's go check it out. Scottsdale Tower inquired about what type of aircraft is this experimental 208 Juliet Papa? We're a caravan, seemed to satisfy their curiosity. With a southbound takeoff roll and a right turnout to the north for VFR airwork, I pointed towards Payson and we climbed to 6,000 feet. The plane behaved just as I expected it would and we stabilized in cruise. I set it up with prop reduced to 1750 RPM and the torque set to 1630. 
Our intent was to set the power to a book setting and compare the actual true airspeed to the book values published in Cessna's charts. With Ken and Blaine recording data, I focused on keeping the plane as steady as possible. While the task proved easily, easy as the air was stable and the strakes were already beginning to demonstrate the improvement in lateral stability. No autopilot used for the entire flight. We recorded an airspeed of 166 knots true airspeed. That's four knots above the book value for the settings and altitude and temperature we were at. Next, I slowly reduced the torque to achieve the published or expected speed. Here's where the improvements really began to show. We saw a reduction of 29 pounds per hour of fuel, 25 degrees Fahrenheit in EGT, and a 205 foot-pound of torque reduction below the book values to fly at book speed. Not too shabby. Having flown up the Verde River Canyon to the north, I then turned right to the southeast toward Roosevelt Reservoir while climbing to 8,000 feet. We repeated the same two checks. Ensuring the plane was completely stabilized before recording any data, and there we realized even more impressive results. At book torque, we were flying 10 knots above the published speed, and after reducing the power to achieve book speed and stabilized, we saw a reduction of 48 pounds per hour of fuel, 50 degrees Fahrenheit of EGT, and at a torque setting 200 foot-pounds below the charted numbers. In all this flying, I never experienced a tail wag or oscillation, and with a mild wind coming out of the south, blowing over the Four Peaks mountain range, which was providing us a little mild mountain wave turbulence, the plane continued to fly straight and stable. So, what does all this mean? The reality of caravan operations is typically short legs where a few knots of airspeed doesn't make a noteworthy change in block times. Where this improvement really hits home is the reduced fuel burns and reduced temps in the engine. Can Raiseback monetize the savings at hot section inspection or overhaul for a 30 to 35 degree average temp reduction? Perhaps not. But we all know that any reduction in temperature and torque for a given airspeed is saving health and longevity on those PT6 power plants. Add that when it comes to the fuel savings, you could monetize that. And I believe they're putting together a business plan and I'm sure we'll hear more about that soon from them. Raisebeck's engineers are projecting an additional five to 10 knots of true airspeed increase from the wheel pants. While they changed the look of the caravan, some people like the look of wheel pants, some not so much. It's very much a personal preference. I will say, if you're operating from pavement to pavement, the speed increase with this combined with the other modifications will be noticeable. For those operating into gravel or other unimproved airstrips, and maybe using the Aero Twin gravel guards, the wheel pants won't be compatible. However, the nose fairing and strakes should be a great complement to the, the Aero Twin setup. Well, my day with Blaine and Ken finished up with a beautiful scenic visual flight over Roosevelt Reservoir, down the Salt River Canyon, and back into Scottsdale where we were enthusiastically greeted by the team at Jet Aviation. I look forward to seeing the actual data on the wheel pans and for operators to begin seeing the savings associated with speed and fuel burn improvements. Well done, Raisbeck. And thank you for the opportunity to fly your experimental Grand Caravan. Okay. All right, so today I'm here with this Freight Holland Caravan and Raisebeck Engineering. And with me is Hal from Raisebeck. Hello there. He's going to tell us a little bit about these mods they've just developed for the Grand Caravan. Yeah, well, there's uh, actually two, two mods here, if you will. One is what we're calling the Epic Caravan. We've got the forward fairing that you see up here in front of the cargo pod and the aft body strakes um, back on the tail end of the airplane. Um, and then that's going to be certified in December. And then we also have the wheel fairings that will be certified in Q1 next year. Um, 
and between the two of those, they give you about 10 knots um, at the same power settings or drop your fuel flow um, five to seven gallons an hour um, at the same speed, um, as well as dropping your IGT. Um, with just the four fairing and uh, straight to drop your IGT uh, about 15 to 20 degrees um, with the four, with the, uh, sorry, with the uh, wheel fairings, it drops your ITT 34 degrees is what our modeling says and our test data from certification says. Um, they're experiencing a lot better data than that right now on the flight while we're doing a demo tour. So we're taking the, the airplane on a tour around the country, um, stopping at most of the places that you would expect with uh, concentrations of caravan operators. Um, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting the forward fairing and the, the strakes, like I said, that's called the Epic Caravan, it'll be called the Epic Plus Caravan when we add the wheel fairings to it. And, uh, looking forward to getting it out in the market. Well, uh, thanks for that brief, Hal. I imagine commercial operators and private operators are going to be pretty excited about airspeed increases and fuel savings. Indeed. That's The caravan's not known for being a fast airplane, that's not what it was built for, but Boy, if you can put this to work and reduce your operating costs and overhaul costs, fuel costs, all of that, that's, that's good news. Yes, indeed. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you.